Hi, Scissor in here once more with another Delirium League Starter Guide. A lot of people have been asking me to make sure that uh, the Essence Drain Trickster is up to date and I have done so. We're also combining pretty much everything in this guide. So we're going to talk a little bit about Energy Shield, a little bit about life and covering pretty much everything related to Essence Drain. Uh, we are not going to be covering bows, mostly because that's not generally what I do. You offer up quite a lot of survival. And uh, as somebody that mostly plays hardcore, that's not a huge option for me. But uh, bows are extremely strong and uh, gets you a crazy amount of damage on Essence Stream. This is an extremely strong league starter. You're never expecting any unique items to drop. And uh, I would also like to mention that I recently made a very long Everything Explained video where I basically simulated a league start and tried to explain as much as possible what I do on a league start. Um, and I'll be using that character to explain a little bit about gear and some extra examples. And if you're bored and trying to kill time, that's a good video to learn more about Essence Strain and how I play it as well. And, uh, and everything there is like a SSF Hardcore uh, after 16 hours. So you get to see some examples of what I have around that point. If you've never watched one of our videos before, we're about to play like a clip explaining the basics of Path of Building. If you've already seen this part, just skip and you can go directly into the build guide that's specifically for Essence Train. So this is Path of Building and we use it in a special way, like way more than most streamers do. Um, so first, uh, there's like download instructions for Path of Building in the description. I'm using a separate branch as well and we'll have uh, instructions on how to do that. It's a lot more up to date and also has some extra special things like uh, it lets Path of Building do actual impale calculations and you get to have Pantheon. So if you're wondering why mine looks different than the default Path of Building, that is why. Uh, it's definitely worth getting POB. Uh, generally, we, we use it. It's a large part of how we do the guides. And uh, first, I want to show like how to import a build. So first, to import a build, you would click here, import from paste bin. All of my guides would have a paste bin and then you would do click on the import and then you get the guide. If you're ever just wanting to explore a streamer's build or something like that, you can just type in any streamer's profile name uh, and then click start. And then you have to like select through the character that they're playing on. And then you can look at everything like that. Obviously that won't be a guide, but um, that's how you do that. This is uh, a video we're going to reuse for every video guide. So the POB and stuff that we'll be showing in the background won't be the one that you're watching most likely. Uh, this is more an explanation of how we do our guides so you know what to look for and how to follow it. So uh, something that makes our guides stand out a lot is instead of just having a finished skill tree and saying, hey, here you go, there's the skill tree, we do it a step by step. Uh, and the reason for that is to make it a lot more obvious for new players where to go next and like what are the most efficient nodes in the start. Because if all you got was this, new players would know where to go here, here, or here first. So... Um, we also include like ascendancies. If you see here, when you click on normal lab, you can see that the first um, one in this, in the guide that we're using as an example would be arena challenger. When you then click on the cruel lab one, it would show blood in the eyes. And it's like this on every guide we do. And, and this is a good example too, because uh, the, the example here is a gladiator bleed build. And there's a couple of different versions that we talk about in that guide. So like there's one where you focus on cluster jewels. There's one with uh, when you switch to the bleed part and there's another like block version for tank gear. In the skills section, we usually try to make it very, very obvious, like uh, what's for leveling and what you're actually using end game and uh, like what your AOE and what your single target is. So here are some examples, you know, you have double strike early on for single target and then you have frost blades for clearing. Uh, and then later you switch to Blade Storm as your ability. And um, then generally gems will be linked in order of importance as well. So if you only have, for example, in this case, a four link, you would use Impale Rage and Close Combat. The notes section. So this is made by Mr. Madiki. And it's, uh, it's like an extra thing we do for new players. Like it looks like a big wall of text. But what this does is that it um, shows players where each gem is and where like where you can buy it and where it can be found and for example if it's a gem that you normally don't get as that class uh we'll, we'll try to specify that as well there'll also be some extra notes like you know wh what to ascend uh what the pantheons are what the bandits are uh, so some extra info there so you don't have to like ask around a lot 
In the item one, there's usually things like early game, mid game, and then like, a, you know, I am rich and I have the money to invest in this build. So there's different gear sets as well. And pretty much all the beginner guides are really aimed at being on a super budget. I never try to flash like crazy numbers like 20 million DPS, 30 million DPS. The important part about my guides is that a new player who doesn't know much about Path of Exile can achieve this. And uh, we try to help you get that as much as possible. So this is the skill tree. And as per normal, we're doing the step by step thing. And I want to try to make some things extra clear in this guide, just to make sure everyone has a great experience. You can see that early on, I like taking Soul Siphon. This helps you get rid of your Mana Flask early on. Sometimes you might not be able to get rid of your Mana Flask entirely until you get Heart and Soul, but it like really, really helps your sustain. Um, as normal as well, you can see that we take Swift Killer as the first Ascendancy. And uh, this gives you so much. It's a lot of damage and also additional speed with like casting and shield charging later on. And while we're talking about Ascendancy, I want to cover one issue that gets brought up a lot. A lot of people ask about Swift Killer versus Prolonged Pain. Um, because obviously here we have the 20% more damage over time. And as a new player, it can be a little confusing why we take Swift Killer. So on Swift Killer, we get four Frenzy Charges. So those four Frenzy Charges will give you 16% uh, more damage just from those. And then because of the stat with the damage uh, per Frenzy and Power Charge, we're getting 40% increased damage there. So it's basically do on 16% more damage and 40% increased or 20% more. Normally on an Essence Train build, you don't really have another solid way of getting Frenzy Charges. And that's why we get Swift Killer. There are some other options. Like if you get minimum frenzy charges on rings, or if you get overcharged and something like a restless ward, then you might be able to drop swift killer. However, um, there is one good reason to drop swift killer as well, and that is if you're particularly focused on boss killing, such as awakener. In in like long prolonged boss fights, you're most likely not going to be using your blight a lot, so you're probably not going to have a lot of frenzy charges up. And and if that is the number one purpose that you're using essence strain for then taking Prolonged Pain instead of Swift Killer is definitely useful. Most people, however, use Essence Drain as a map clearing build and then Swift Killer is by far superior. So as you can see here in the skill tree, we've got your, your normal life hybrid and this is extremely strong and really high damage as well. You generally end up with more damage on a life build than a CI build and it can be a lot harder to scale the, the damage on CI. Then you can see the, the CI seal tree here, and then we have like an extra end game one, and this is gonna be covering the Kilawava, which I'll talk about later. So we've tidied up the skill section a little bit. It should be very clear what to use, and we have like a separate CI setup here as well. The life version is extremely easy to fit all the gems. The CI version is a little bit harder. The first thing that you might end up not having room for is being able to self-cast a spare. That's also harder to craft now than, than before because they've removed some of our fossil crafts. Also, the notes section has a lot of information if you're not sure where to buy gems and stuff like that. We have a couple of examples of gear here. The life early game set, set up and just very, very standard life on everything. Resist on everything that you can. Um, and CI swapping gear and then some, some end game gear. And this is from one of my characters. So showing like... You know, crazy stuff like I'm I have like 30 exalts or 20 exalts, and you're looking at upgrading pieces. These are some examples of really, really endgame pieces that I used in one of my builds. Now remember, flasks are very important for this build. So I would definitely recommend that you follow it. Jade, granite, and uh, a quartz flask helps a lot. Uh, you can also replace the quartz flask with a basalt flask, it depends. A little bit on how many like big physical hits are in Delirium. Metamorph, obviously Basalt was really nice. Uh, but if there's just a lot of... Um, the way you like decide on this, if, they, if it's similar to Legion, where there's a load of monsters attacking you, then you want to up your dodge. Whereas if it's similar to Metamorph with more like one strong monster that does one big hit, then Basalt is going to be your flask of choice. Um, so for this build, we uh, you can help Alira early on just to get some resist. But generally, you kill all the bandits just to get the plus two skill points. 
And you can respect to that later using 20 regrets and an Onyx amulet and selling that to a vendor in Act 2. Uh, for Pantheons, we have a couple of options. So early on, Diamond Skin is a very nice anointment and it's very cheap. Uh, it gives you the resistance stuff so you don't have to worry so much about your gear. Uh, early on, once you start getting a zero oils, you want to use Prodigal Perfection. It gives you a lot of damage and is a great anointment for this build. Uh, later, I usually end up taking the Deflection, and that's especially when you have Kilwalva. So just being able to get that extra block and stuff helps out a lot. And I also want to, um, I also want to give an example, and this is my everything explained character. I'm going to keep this up as well, so that you can import my profile and look directly at this character if you're looking. And, and this is what my character looks like after around 18 hours, probably around 16 hours of hardcore solo cell phone. And um, you can see that here as a weapon, would like that's all I'm using. Just a plus one KL spell steel gems. Uh, very, very simple jewelry with just life and resist. Um, pretty bad amulet. And got crazy lucky on boots from Incursion. Incursion boots obviously has a great chance because you get the movement speed and spell dodge for free. Um, very unrealistic this early in, but uh, that's, a, that's a great boot. Um, on a life build, the only thing you're expecting on a shield is life. So, uh, wh whereas on a, on a CI build, you're, you're not going to get a shield that is very high energy shield and plus one chaos. However, on a shield, this is far more likely because you're only looking for two stats. And then if you have an open suffix to craft resist, that's great. Helmet as well is just life and resist, same with belt and, and gloves as well. And um, there's a lot more opportunity in Delirium to get a 6 sync because the Vile side areas have been upgraded. Um, so th those are like, this is how I got my 6 sync in SSF and it usually happens most leagues. And if you do end up with a uh, corrupted one, like quite often the corrupted ones will have opposite colors. Uh, of like, you know, if you get a strength one, it might end up being a lot of blue and green sockets. Do remember that you can recolor these in the crafting bench uh, at the cost of additional Vile Orbs. Now, something that's particularly hard in Hardcore Solo Cell Found is getting useful jewels. So, for example, here I ended up with just one strength to help with uh, my strength requirement and then chaos damage. And uh, that just means that I that I don't end up investing in jewel slots until I actually find them or I'm able to craft them. So we can see here that um, on, on a level 85 character, we got 5.4k life and 1k energy shield. And I was generally feeling great, just like mapping and feeling very, very sick. Now, as an example of, uh, of what I have here damage-wise and stuff, uh, I'm using a... Uh, it's a level 19 Essence Drain with the plus one from both of those. The the main upgrade I'd be looking for here would be a very similar one, but unveiling the Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier from Betrayal and crafting that as a prefix. And that's that's all you need early game. Already I'm at around 97,000 Chaos Damage uh, per second. And the way you look at the damage, and when somebody asks you what your damage on Essence Drain is, you're looking for the, um, the stat... Uh, Damage over time multiplier, which is three from the bottom. It's not the DPS next to the mana cost. That's just your initial hit, which does not matter for essence strain. And uh, for playstyle as well, it's it's worth noting that you like you throw down contagion and then essence strain into it. So you're never really gonna have mana issues because um, you shouldn't be like spamming your essence strain or casting multiple. Once I have around two hundred thousand chaos damage per second over time. I feel fairly confident on most like conquerors and most bosses. And if I was doing like Uber Elder or Awakener 8, I would want around 300,000 damage per second. And if you're able to get more than that, I had one that I believe had like 450,000 and that was just melting everything. Obviously that is very, very min max and, and crazy good stuff. Uh, and, and one of the biggest upgrades that I really want to mention here is especially if you're in trade league, usually pretty early you can buy a level 20 essence drain. Uh, the gem levels is what scale spell builds the most, so trying to get a 21 as early as possible by uh, leveling a lot of essence drains in your offhand and then volleying them when they hit 20 is definitely something you want to do. So let's talk a little bit about the leveling process. Early on you level with Contagion, Frost Blink and Blight until you get level 12. And sometimes I'll actually throw some support gems on Contagion early on. We don't have any of the AoE support gems by then. 
And uh, normally it's enough to kill like the, the normal white monsters. And again, generally this is not a build that you should be running out of mana a lot on. Early on you can use a mana flask, but it's fairly easy to replace that once you get the playstyle down. Um, most of the people that said they were having mana issues ended up like spamming the essence drain multiple times into the monster. Which is not what you want to do with this build. If you find yourself struggling on bosses, you can use a decoy totem as well. And uh, some people like using wither totems or blight totems. I usually don't bother with this, but it is an option. Now, something that I really want to stress, and I can't stress this enough, is a jade flask. It's, this, it's the most important flask for this build. And uh, generally, every time somebody was complaining that they had low survival, they were not using a jade flask. And you can very, very quickly notice when your Jade Flask falls off, because that's generally when you can die. And the reason for this is Ghost Dance and how this works is that every time that you get hit, you recover energy shield based on your evasion. So if you have high energy shield, you're going to be getting chunks of like 600 or maybe even a thousand energy shield every time you get hit. As well as obviously lowering the chance that you get hit in the first place. So... We're going to talk a little bit about items and we'll start with the life version. So some items that can be great to find early on, especially in SSF where you don't have that many options for gear, is Cane of Unraveling. Uh, normally I don't use staves for this build, however like the plus two gem levels and obviously then you don't need to put them inside the staff itself. So if you have a tabula, that's like a massive boost there. Uh, and speaking of tabula, getting a plus two duration or plus two AOE gems early on is great as well. Uh, Essence Drain is both a projectile and an AoE and duration, so there's so many things you can get on a tabula when it's uh, like either handed in from Vanity or corrupted with a Valor. Seal's Amplifier can be really nice to find early on as well. Helps a little bit with uh, additional AoE. Usually you do get enough on the skill tree, and even though Arcane Expanse has moved to be in a really good position now, it gives us one radius and I don't really want to waste points to get that. Um, Ans Heritage, it did get nerfed in 3.10, lowering its max resistance by 1, but it's got a boatload of armor, it's, it's got a high life roll, and it's just a generally nice item. Restless Ward can be a really nice item to find early on, especially for hybrid. It's got life on it, it's got, uh, it increases the duration of your frenzy charges, and, or any charge, and this actually lets you take overcharged on the skill tree, and as long as you're clearing very fast, you can keep it up with just that. This is one opportunity where you can drop Swift Killer. Do note that this requires you to clear very fast and have very little downtime for things like looting. So, um, let's talk a little bit about the Energy Shield version. And obviously, this is lower damage. And if you're a very new player, it can be harder to, uh, it can be harder to play an Energy Shield build. One of the things that I found helped a lot was having the Space Bar as my movement key. And on my, uh, on my second bar, I have Flame Dash on mouse button 5. And you don't need to hold control down for that to work, which a lot of people don't know, so I figured I'd mention it. But uh, I found that helped a lot because that lets me use all, all of my flasks um, without worrying too much about it. Whereas if, if, for example, when I used to use Q as my movement ability, using all five flasks was pr pretty difficult. Um, and that is one of the, the main changes or differences with playing an energy shield build is that you don't have a life flask anymore. So I'm using a Basil, Jade, Granite, Sulfur, and Quicksilver. This character is called Zizzer and Skips Metamorph. The playtime is 1 day, 22 hours. And this was one of my SSF characters. So I had some of the Energy Shield gear already prepared for my previous character before that died. Um, and I would say that if you are going to switch over to Energy Shield, import your items by Control c Control Ving them into Path of Building and sort of like estimate how much energy shield you're going to get with the gear you have prepared before you switch. I would generally never switch unless I have at least like 6.5, maybe even 7k energy shield. On softcore, 6k is probably fine. But generally the main reason we go and uh, CI build in the first place is to be more tanky. So this is one example of not like crazy end game gear, but more like mid game energy shield. Um, obviously the despair on hit ones are a lot harder to get now. You need a hunter base to get it. But uh, I really want to stress like do chaos damage over time multiplier is like the number one stat that you're looking for on ones. Um, 
something and the reason i want to show this character as well is the delirium gloves so for this you basically want to use an essence called delirium and that gives us these socketed gems deal 30 percent more damage over time um and then you want to you're most likely going to have to end up annulling it you need two open prefixes so in this case you can see that we have uh, only mana as a prefix and we have one open suffix as well so basically you needed three stacks of um now that we have that we multimoded the plus one aoe gems and plus one projectile gems and that makes that i can put essence strain in this so i've got a level 21 essence strain and that becomes level 23 uh, and then it's like a it's very very close to a six thing in damage and that lets me actually six sync my blight uh, and it also puts less, less pressure on you actually having a six thing which can be hard to get for a lot of players uh, so on this character we have 138,000 chaos damage over time so that's pretty low and not something that i'm like super comfortable doing like awakener 8 with so well, you can see that uh like an energy shield character could have quite a lot more tank it can end up with quite a lot less damage so a lot of people have asked me to show uh, like a, a close to fully scaled lesson strain or at least like a more geared one so people know what to what to get and uh, this is an example of my scissoring can't stop character um that uh that i'd like managed to get really good gear for so um it's only got 8,700 energy shield, but this is using the lethal pride kilowava thing. Uh, I want to take some time and explain this as well because it's an extremely tanky mechanic and really good for essence drain. Um, so what kilowava does is it changes any keystone into glancing blows. And this is that uh, you double your attack and spell block, but you take 50% of the damage from blocked hits. Uh, the number itself isn't very important. I don't... Uh, I, I'm actually not getting anything good for that, but you might end up with, you know, depending on your timeless jewel, you could end up with a good stat on melding. Um, and the timeless jewels are pretty rare and hard to get, uh, and the way you get them is by doing the, the Legion emblems, particularly the Karui one in this case. Uh, and the special thing about a Kilowava timeless jewel is that you want a uh, recover 5% of energy shield when you block. You can get this on a Crusader shield or a Shaper shield, and you have a higher chance to get it on Shaper than on Crusader. And this is not a crazy base shield. Uh, sometimes you'll end up getting something like a Titanium Spirit Shield being extremely expensive, but you might end up getting a Lacewood Spirit Shield for quite a lot less, and it's still got 200 Energy Shield on it, whereas on a Titanium, it would probably have around 300. So you just got to remember that it's not so much about the Energy Shield on here, it's mostly about the uh, Energy Shield stat. And other than that, we've crafted the chance to block spell damage as well. Ideally, you would actually have that as a natural roll because that goes a lot higher. Um, and the way this works is with with um, with just Tempest Shield up, I have 75% block and 38% spell block, and then 56% spell block with um, with my Jade. Sorry, with my uh, Rumi's Concoction up. Now I'm still missing quite a lot of block nodes. So I'd be getting eventually, like this is a low level character, and eventually I would have 75% attack and spell block. It's also worth to mention that there's a lot of cluster jewels coming out with spell block on them too. So Kilowatt should be very, very strong. Now I want to take a few seconds and show you guys how like tanky Kilowatt is. So the way it works is that every time I'm getting hit, I'm basically recovering a ton of energy shield. So you can see that I can just stand here in the middle of these monsters and they're basically regenerating my energy shield. However, if I let my flask drop out, you can see that they will start breaking. Uh, and uh, you are definitely like relying on flask quite a lot here. Now, obviously this is not going to be a problem while you're clearing. So you're very, very strong uh, against a lot of things attacking you. Now, one thing worth mentioning here is uh, something that can give you additional survival uh, versus uh, fast incoming attacks, uh, which might be the case now in Delirium, is that you can put a small thread of hope, the Awakener Jewel here, uh, and you can get face acrobatics without uh, getting the penalty of acrobatics. And, and speaking of Awakener items, something that can be really, really nice for damage is getting Crown of the Inward Eye. 
which gives you the transfiguration of uh, soul and mind, which makes your energy shield and mana nodes affect your damage. So if we look here, it goes to, um, around 50,000 damage over time on our tooltip is coming from the crown in this case. And something worth pointing out too is uh, you can fairly easy, um, at the cost of like four to five exiles, depending on what league you're playing, you can make a plus one int or plus one chaos skill gems that also has chaos damage over time multiplier. Then you also have a chance that uh, you get the plus, like the other ones, you could get plus two, but this is very rare, um, but definitely possible. Um, so the way you do this is you would roll the chaos damage over time multiplier on an elder amulet, and then you would roll plus one int gems or plus one chaos on a hunter amulet. As long as those are the only special influence mods on that amulet, when you awaken or rub them together, you're going to get damage over time and uh, plus one gem levels combined with, you know, lots of other random stuff. And in this case, I got lucky enough plus two. Something I want to bring up as well is that when you are playing the energy shield version, you are losing skitterbots. Uh, and um, the reason we're using skitterbots in Essence Drain is because it makes your enemies shocked, taking 15% more damage. Now, if you're using Storm's Gift, then enemies you kill are shocked and they sort of proliferate to nearby monsters. Uh, and you can get a Storm's Gift with probably around 150 to 180 energy shield if you're lucky with the Synthesis Implicits. So you can get some really good ones and they'll definitely help your clear speed as well. Obviously, they do nothing for bosses. For leveling, your Pantheons should be the Brine King just so you don't get stunned. And then you also use the Relic Cash Pantheon, so you take less damage. Um, if you're a life build, you're always going to want to upgrade Shakari for the Poison Immunity. And once you go CI, obviously you don't need this. You can do Relic Cash to take even less damage from like physical damage over time and bleeds. Um, Solaris is a really, really good Pantheon endgame because it helps a lot against the AoE one-shots. And that's generally every slam that hits for a lot of damage. So for gems, it's very easy to fit everything on a life build. Once you're playing on CI, it's going to be harder now because uh, you can no longer get despair on hit on your wand as easily. You actually need a hunter wand. <clears throat> you might need an onset ring to be able to fit things like despair and maybe even for your raw molten shell. Mana issues in this build is extremely easy. I've never had mana issues using this build and uh, it's explained earlier that you have a lot of ways of countering this. So there's not really any useful level of uniques that I would really care about besides your normal ones like Tabula and Wonderlust. However, plus one gem level ones are really, really good. Um, the best way to get these, and this has changed slightly because if you're using, uh, if you're using an aberrant fossil on a wand, that can no longer hit despair on hit, which is definitely something you wanted before. However, what I would recommend is make a new character. Uh, kill Hillock, and then sell a Scroll of Wisdom and a Scouring to the vendor. This will make your character level 1, and then when you buy a 1 from the vendor, that is going to be level 2. The reason we do this is that it's easier to craft 1s, because then there are a couple of attack mods that you can't roll. So if you're using an Aberrant Fossil on an item level 2 1, it's very likely that you're going to get plus 1 Chaos gems. Now, the best case scenario here is having an open prefix so that early on you can craft spell damage and later on you can craft chaos damage over time multiplier. Once you do have a wand like that you can just start spamming a burn fossils into a higher level wand and then the things you're looking at is obviously high chaos damage over time multiplier, high spell damage and plus one spell gems and plus one chaos gems. Cane of unraveling is not a bad leveling item either. So Trickster offers crazy survival bonus and it's such a like it's such a tanky and nice build to play. Um and once you get the timeless jewel kill the Wava, you can be like borderline immortal to just like a, a lot of hits attacking you quickly. So this build generally uses a lot of the let's knock a hit strategy. It's slightly more vulnerable to big one shots like Metamorph. Um but since you don't encounter them every map anymore and you can still use Valmont and Shell for things like this, then it's just a very tanky build. And Delirium generally looks like something where there's a lot of enemies attacking you. And the sustain on this build in every way is really high. You're, you're getting life 
energy shield, and mana back from clearing. So it should feel really good to play. So we use Malevolence and Skitter Buff, and we're also self-cursing Despair. Generally remember that you don't really need Despair except it's against maybe a really tanky rear and generally just as bosses. This is a good point to bring up that Witchfire Brew is severely overrated for this build. The reason for that is the uh, Sulfur Flask is generally always a better replacement. Now when you're using a Witchfire Brew, it like, gives a small aura of Despair around your character. However, our Contagion is going to be probably one and a half screens away killing monsters, and they're obviously not affected by this Despair. Um, as well as in boss fights, the Despair is only going to last you around 8 seconds and then you're out of fast charges. Because of that, normally I, try to, uh, I would try to get something like Despair on hit on a Hunter Wand. Yeah, it's not going to spread through Contagion. However, whenever you are casting your Essence Strain on a rare or a big monster, it's going to hit that one, which is where the damage really counts. And you're also going to be cursing through your shield charge as well. And when we're CI on this build, you generally drop Skitter Buffs to get Discipline. If you're able to get a Malevolence Reservation Helmet, then you can get the Spider Aura from Bestiary as well, which is really, really good. And there's no crazy, like, uniques or anything you really need to make this work. And that's one of the things that makes the build so strong. As far as drawbacks goes, it's obviously not, like, the craziest damage builds. Um, I've tried to make it more clear how to further scale the damage in this build. And I feel that once you get like between 200 to 300,000 uh, damage over time on the in-game tooltip, you've got pretty great damage and I felt like I can do pretty much everything. However, it's obviously still limited compared to like builds with like 5 to 10 million damage. And there's like, there's no crazy financial hurdle on this build, which is really nice. You're just... Everything is very cheap and that makes it such a good lead starter and then you can like use this build to make currency. So again, it's a very strong and cheap build and it's an extremely good league starter. Um, there's nothing you're relying on and it just scales very well off itself. It's also very easy to play and just works really good. Uh, another big benefit of this as well, which I haven't really talked about yet, is you can throw an item rarity gem into your contagion and that will count for all your kills. You obviously know that it's essence drain killing everything, but because of the way the mechanics work, Contagion, in the terms of the game sense, is counted as the killer. So you're getting around 50-60 free rarity, and especially on Hardcore Soul Cellphone, this makes it such a good starter and why I've used it multiple times. So this was a bit of a longer guide than normal, I just wanted to make sure we covered everything in this video. And uh, it's an amazing league starter. I, I haven't decided if I'm starting with this myself in Delirium, but most likely not. It is still an extremely strong build and very heavily recommended. Very fun to play as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. If you have any issues or struggles, I can always fix any problem you have on this guide. And if I'm pushing for level 100 and not able to respond directly, then one of my moderators will be able to help you. It's a very, very easy build for us to fix. If you feel like it's underperforming and you have any questions, drop by my channel, twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do. Good luck in delirium.